One of the difficulties that the pandemic has brought up, I don't know if you followed this case in the UK where we had a well-known conspiracy theorist, David Icke, who gave an interview yeah. about uh, how the 5G uh, masts are causing the coronavirus. Um, and soon afterwards, there was a spate of arson attacks against 5G masts, right? And yeah. YouTube banned that video, then he went and did another interview on a private platform, blah, 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 blah. And I think that's one of probably the most difficult cases where you think, well, is this person's speech causing destruction of property, et cetera? What, where do you stand on something like that? Because I don't know if I've still worked out what my position on that is. Yeah, so uh, I know that case. Uh, I watched that interview and then I was on uh, Brian Rose's London Real show to talk about it. And uh, I, I think uh, even someone as kind of far out there or nutty or, or, or fringy as, as David Icke should be given his due. Now, when I, when I say that, I don't mean we're obligated to put him on every show so he has his voice. It's up to him to, 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 to find a platform for his, his conspiracy theories. And if somebody takes them up on him, fine, don't, you, don't censor that. Uh, and, you know, he's not, again, he's not completely crazy. You know, if you listen to him, He's obviously a fairly smart, articulate man, um, you know, but his chain of reasoning leads him down, you know, some, you know, off the rails, down some crazy pathways where he ends up with the lizard aliens running the world or, <laughs> or you know, the 5G towers. Now, is, are his words responsible for somebody firebombing a tower? I, I would say that's a bit of a reach. That is to say, people that would do something like that, if you point out to them where David Icke was wrong, they're not likely to be changing their mind anyway. The analogy I use is with the, you know, the famous story about the um, conspiracy theory about Hillary Clinton running pedophile ring out of a pizzeria, uh, you know, before the 2016 election. I mean, this is as, as crazy as it gets. And some guy showed up to this pizzeria with a gun, you know, and, and fortunately no one was hurt, but uh, you know, people acting on like that and, and people that believe that, my correcting them on, you know, Hillary's not running a pedophile ring out of a pizzeria. <laughs> they're not, you know, they're not going to change their mind about Hillary uh, 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 on this. And they're likely to do something crazy anyway, because that's that particular conspiracy theory is not why they're agitated. Why not? Why they're not, not why they're out there doing their, their things like that. In any case, um, the moment you set up a gatekeeper that says like, like apparently Google slash YouTube is doing, either algorithms or actual people sitting there watching videos and making the decision, are we going to allow this or not? Then you're down the pathway of, of expanding that category to include more and more things that are kind of moderate, you know, kind of, you know, within the, the kind of the Overton window, as it's called of discussable subjects, that category gets bigger and then, and then censorship expands and then more and more of us are self-censoring or we're, we're afraid to say what we think because we might be canceled or censored or kicked off YouTube or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. And uh, that's a dangerous path to go. So that's why on, on page one of the book, I talk about the 1919 decision. So over a century ago now of Schenck versus the United States, Charles Schenck was the head of the Socialist Party in Philadelphia and he was distributing uh, pamphlets, flyers to draft age men to protest the draft. He said it was unconstitutional. You know, the 13th and 14th Amendments protect you from slavery and, and guarantee your bodily autonomy. And the draft is basically saying the government can take my body and send me off to war to die if it wants. And, and that's a kind of a form of slavery. Now, that's a debatable point, but that's not the point that I'm making, is that just saying that, uh, was a criminal act, uh, an act of treason at the time. And that's when uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes made his famous uh, decision in which he included that phrase, a clear and present danger that was the equivalent of shouting fire in a theater. Uh, shouting fire in a theater. Well, you know, over decades, more and more things got put into that bin of clear and present danger such to the point where anybody uttering any criticism, criticism of the government could be considered a clear and present danger. So we got to shut this guy up. And that's where you end up with, you know, by the seventies, you end up with the language police and political correctness. And, you know, every utterance could be considered a clear and present danger to somebody somewhere. <laughs> and then, you know, by the nineties and early two thousands, you end up with, well, to, to, 
paraphrase the title of your podcast, you know, people that are triggered by the tiniest little things like the paroxysm at Yale over Halloween costumes, you know, where Nicholas Christakis and his wife, is, you know, uh, sent, sent that email out saying, you know, we're not going to tell you what kind of costumes to wear on Halloween. You're adults, you know, and, uh, and, and for this, they were, you know, totally uh, just shattered. Like, no, you're like our parents. You have to tell us what to do. <laughs> this is a complete reversal of the way things used to be. Right. Well, it's quite a journey, Mike. And before Francis jump in, let me just follow up because uh, just to stick with the David Icke thing, just for a moment, let, I'm just trying to work it through in my head. Like I said, I don't know what I think and I'm trying to work it out, which is, I think the spirit in which you engage with. Yeah. 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 Yes, totally. Right. So if David Icke is right now, I don't think he is, but if he's right, that 5g masts are responsible for at this point of time recording, 350,000 deaths around the world. Would, would, would I not be reasonable in going out and burning down a 5G mast? I mean, would that not be the right response? And therefore, is his making that argument not causing me to think potentially I should do this? Well, it's already illegal to do that, to, to, to uh, commit violence against other people, to destroy property, mm. to burgle and vandal. Th those are already crimes. So n anybody doing that, for whatever reason, it's still wrong. It's illegal and immoral, period. I mean, if you really believed it, then the way to, to, to do it would be to address the government to um, look into the matter or curtail the activities of telecommunications companies, uh, regulate the telecommunications companies. I mean, the government already does this a lot. I mean, you, we, we don't have to nudge the government to be more regulatory. The regulatory state is massive, right? So there's already a, an apparatus in place to address those kinds of problems if there was evidence for it. Uh, and, and clearly there isn't, because if there was, the government would be all over it. This is what government regulators love to do. They love to nose around in private companies and regulate them. So it's not like that, you know, that, that isn't in place already. So I'm, I'm really not worried about that. But let, let's do say why it's wrong. I mean, 5G is just an extension of 4G, extension of 3G and so on, all the way back to the 90s and the Motorola flip phone that you held up to your ear and the fears back then that this was causing brain tumors, right? And, and these were just cancer clusters. You know, you throw a bunch of pennies up in the air and they land on the ground. They're not perfectly spaced out. They're clustered. And, and this is true of everything in life, including uh, cancer cases. They're clustered. So you're going to get clustering of uh, people that use a lot of cell phones and people that have brain tumors just randomly. And that's all it was. And, uh, and, and so those kinds of conspiracies have always been around, as well as, you know, by the way, Bill Gates. You know, Bill Gates has been trying to conquer the world since the 90s. And, of course, he wasn't trying to conquer the world in software. But that's a different thing than, than what the conspiracy <laughs> thing you know, and I, I'm now predicting that uh, Bezos will replace Bill Gates as, as, as Voldemort, as the evil Darth Vader, um, because, you know, he's now poised to become the first trillionaire in history. So he will be a target, you know, and, and that tells us what's really going on here. These are, you know, fear of the unknown, fear of the invisible, you know, the virus is invisible, the, you know, the, it, the electromagnetic radiation coming from the 5G cell towers is invisible. Nuclear power is invisible. People fear things that have effects that are powerful that they can't see, smell, taste, touch. And the virus is, is essentially invisible. Without a high-powered uh, microscope, you know, we, we, we had never seen a, a, a virus. So, you know, that tells us something about human psychology.